5 in the morning in Alaska, when you get up before the sun rises in the summertime, you know you're getting up early. So uh, we're going to go salmon fishing in Talkeetna. And uh, salmon, salmon fishing is always best in the morning, so you got to get up early. All right. Me, my father, and two friends drove 45 minutes north to Talkeetna to go fishing with Phantom Tri River Charters in Talkeetna. Now, we've been doing fishing charters out of Talkeetna since I was a small boy. And all the guides out of Talkeetna use these jet boats, these uh, Woolrich jet boats you see here. They operate at high speeds but at very, very low draw, which is an absolute necessity on these fast and shallow Alaskan rivers where there's a lot of things to hit. This is our guide, Nico. Great guy. Put us on the fish. Fun guy to talk to. Nico took us down the Talkeetna, then up the Susitna River to a nice little honey hole. We pull in, and the silvers and the chums are just rolling around. It was really fabulous. So he rigs us up with these egg loop knots with nothing else. Just bare main line, four-aught hook, egg loop knots. Perfect. Didn't take long to hook into some great chum salmon, which we don't eat, but they're my favorite to catch. There we go. We're fishing for two types of salmon in this spot, chum salmon and silver salmon. Now the chum salmon are bigger and stronger, but very few people eat them, so they're really undervalued. The silver salmon taste fabulous. And so when, as soon as you catch one, you want to crack it on the head, get that sucker ready for the freezer because they, they taste very good. This silver right here is a real average size one, but is nice and bright. You want to eat them when they're as silver as possible. As soon as they start to turn a little bit, then it gets dodgy. If they're full-blown red, you don't eat them. This right here, nice little Dolly Varden. Dolly Varden's an Arctic fish. It's a member of the char family. Beautiful fish. Kind of like a rainbow trout, but it has skin instead of scales, and it's got these yellow and pink dots on the side. But great fish. Fights a lot like a rainbow. I really enjoy catching them. Caught a lot of dollies over the years. Uh, this here is another great chum salmon. 
Just, I have a ball catching these things. A lot of people just don't care, and, and a lot of the guys are kind of ribbing me about catching so many hey, chums on this trip, but man, I just love catching them. And this one, you see, it's got its colors, so even if you were going to eat one, you wouldn't want to eat this one because it's already changed colors. The other guys are with us, did real well. They caught a couple silvers, a couple chums. Everyone had a really good time, and we put a lot of fish on the bank. Uh, the limit was three silver salmon per person, so that's what we were gunning nice for. Silver. The trip was going to go until 11 a.m. or until everyone limited out, whichever came first. Yeah. Right as we were packing up to leave, I just started getting the vibes to get this one nibble. You can see this really soft take. Wham! Catch a silver right there at the end. And the silvers, they bite really, really subtly. I mean, they don't hammer it like a catfish does. They just kind of pick it up and lift the line gently. So you really got to keep an eye out. Out of all the silvers I caught on this trip, only a handful of them ever twitched the rod tip. You had to watch the line and see whether the line was moving. Very, very subtle takes. But this was a perfect dime bright silver, perfect eating fish. So as soon as you get that thing on the bank, you want to crack it over the head. That puts it out of its misery, keeps it from getting away, and it's the fastest way to do the deed without getting too messy. Great fish, great fish. And this slough was just a fantastic spot, but it started to taper off, and uh, Miku said, I got another spot for us. So we hopped all in the boat, headed further upstream up the Susitna River, and uh, he put us on a, another great, great spot. A lot of companies do sightseeing tours on this river as well. You, on a clear day, you get a great view of Mount Denali, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful river. And this spot that Nico put us on was uh, pretty swift moving, unlike the slough we were at before. And they had a bunch of these uh, pink salmon just sitting here right under the boat. You can see this one's got yellow spots on him. That's uh, where it's, his flesh is rotting away. He's getting really close to spawn, and as they get close to spawn, they start to rot. So... I see a good spot downstream for where we park the boat and kind of wander on down there. With this sort of thing, the fish are tied up against the shore. They're trying anything to get out of the current. So I find this little eddy and it's absolutely packed with silver salmon. I hook six silver salmon in about 10 minutes and lose all but one of them. About drove myself bonkers. Got one. Oh. Oh. Oh, that was a silver too. Okay, I need to set my hook better. Oh. And there's a the real neutral current, my bobber isn't going anywhere. Like, there we go. Dang it! I'm just throwing down the little membrane and straggler eggs. Uh, I think there's a half decent chance it'll hit that. Yep. I don't think I got any better at setting the hook, but luckily Nico is a ninja with a landing net and he was able to net the thing before I was able to get it off the line. <laughs> But uh, this was my third silver salmon, and that did me for the day, limited me out. Absolutely, absolutely fabulous trip. And uh, with that, I think all but two people got their limit. 11 o'clock came, so we headed back to shore, and just fabulous, fabulous day. Uh, absolutely wonderful. Great weather, good fishing. And uh, you can see we did uh, we did just fine. So great, uh, great silver salmon, and... Uh, uh, one decent dolly they ended up keeping. But I had a great day with my fishing with my dad. Absolutely fabulous. And of course, any guide worth his salt does a good job filleting these salmon, gets them all packed up, ready for uh, the flight home. On the way out of Talkeetna, we stopped at the roadhouse, and that's the place we always go to eat when we're over in Talkeetna. And got myself a little Rudy in a parka, which is basically a reindeer sausage uh, wrapped in a pastry. It's not, not too bad. Roadhouse is a good place to get some food. At any rate, Talkeetan is a, a fun place, and if you're there, it's it can be good to kind of do the tourist thing. And they got some shops and some restaurants. It's right at the the foot of Mount Denali, and right there by the Talkeetan and Susitna River. It's a beautiful location, a small town, um, just a couple city blocks, and that's about it. But but we drove back to Anchorage to go pick up my wife and my two boys, so we could pick them up and come back to the cabin and spend some more time together. Yeah, you want to go to the tunnel? I, I suck. 
Me, my wife, and my two boys left Anchorage and headed up to the Cashwitna River where my folks have a cabin. And it's just an absolutely beautiful drive, about two hours north of Anchorage. And just had a great time spending and time together and chatting. And uh, after we got settled, I took Tommy, put him on the four-wheeler, and we uh, drove down to the river to do some uh, salmon fishing. Uh, Tommy was chomping at the bit to catch another salmon and to go on the four-wheelers. That boy just loves fishing, and he, and he absolutely loves uh, playing on those four-wheelers. This is the rig I was using on the Cashewitna River to catch silvers and trout, but this is about as big as you want to go. I found that going really small was actually the key on this trip. I caught the vast majority of my silvers on number six and number eight hooks. And you can see here for rod holders, I just had forked sticks and a stick driven into the ground above the reel to keep my rod from going in the water. And that little uh, ultralight trout rod with the eight pound line I ended up landing most of my silvers on it. That's, that's a silver. Ooh, this is going to be a fight. That's a proper silver salmon. Well, that's a, a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. There we go. Yeah, look at that. That is a beautiful silver. Not a big silver, but dying bright and loads of fun to catch on that ultralight rod. Absolutely fabulous eating. And you can see here, number 10 hook. The only reason why it got bent is bending it, getting it out of the fish's mouth. But basically, I went and made myself a little cooler. It was really hot that day, and I didn't want the fish out in the sun. So I just stuck a stick through the gills and shoved it and pinned it to the bottom of the, the river after I'd killed the fish. And uh, that water is glacier fed water so it's icy cold. Terrible. As soon as Tommy saw me land that fish on his rod, he wanted to do all the casting. And he sat on that bank and flailed around with that rod for about 30 minutes. He had a great time. Uh oh, he found fish. And this is a great example of why you always bonk your salmon as soon as possible. I get this salmon up on the bank, I take the hook out of its mouth, and then as soon as I did that, I got him, Tom. Tommy starts screaming about his toy floating away. So I go down there and I look up just in time to see that salmon just about to flop it back into the river. Needless to say, as soon as I got that fish out of the net, I took care of business and did what I should have done in the first place. You took your boots off and now you're standing in the water. A pasta, no right? A baby frog. Oh, do you catch a baby frog there? Hey, show them to me, show them to me, Tom. It's a, a buck of bat. There you go, a baby frog. You sure did catch a baby frog. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Later that night, my brother and his boys joined me for a spot of fishing on the river, and uh, he managed to land this nice little long-nosed sucker here. He was kind of bemused that I was actually interested in it. This right here is the closest thing to a carp we have in Alaska. This is a long-nosed sucker. This is about uh, a full-size one, not a bad-size one. You can see right there, it's got this uh, mouth with all these little sensory organs right there on the bottom of its, its face. And you can see why I call it a long nose sucker. It's nice. This would make incredible flathead bait in another part of the world, but uh, <laughs> no flatheads here. But at any rate, they eat a lot of uh, salmon eggs. And uh, at any rate, we'll get this one back in the water.
By the time the sun set, it was close to midnight and time to go to bed, but it would be a short night. Around 5 a.m., my cute little boy Nathan woke me up, so I decided it was time for his first salmon fishing trip. Hi, Nathan. Hi. either come underneath him or like this you go like this see and then he turns and runs into the net I got one it's silver People often ask me how I get to go fishing so often. Well, folks, this is how you do it right here. Baby wakes up you and your wife at 5 a.m. You pick up the baby and say, don't worry, baby. I'm going fishing. I'm taking the kid with me. Your wife will let you go fishing plenty of times if you do that. That was just a great time with Nathan. He, uh, he had a ball. We kept him bundled up warm, and he did just fine. Little guy will be reeling in his own salmon in no time. Got these salmon back to the cabin, got them all flayed up, got them put in Ziploc bags and frozen. I had 25 pounds of salmon flays took home after this trip. It's absolutely a wonderful trip. Gonna be smoking up a lot of salmon. Well, I'm the fisherman in the family, but my brother is definitely more of the shooter in the family. So uh, he pulled out the little, little 22 uh, rifle and 22 pistol that the kids used to target shoot and let me have a go at it and let, let me show off exactly how rusty I am. And <laughs> it was a great time. Tommy loves fishing, but he wouldn't let us leave the cabin without one more ride on the four wheelers with me and my wife.
you like what you've seen, check out part one and part four of this amazing Alaska trip. And don't forget to hit subscribe. We appreciate your likes and comments. Thanks for watching.